Um, Michele was going to join as well. He confirmed this morning uh, to talk about action at run times in his recent work. Here he is. Hello. Hello. Okay. Are we waiting for other to join? Yeah, we'll wait a, a couple minutes. I just uh, indicated that Roderick said he might have a conflict, and Drago says some of the OW team have relief have, have a release coming up, so they might be busy uh, for that. Okay. Wait, like one more minute, I think. All right, I guess we'll get started in earnest. I took attendance, I recorded the regrets. Um, Pretty is also on vacation. Um, I'm just going to switch and share my raw notes. <laughs> so I'm keeping notes at the same time. Um, so basically in terms of um, seeing new people, Um, wanted to raise attention um, to a certain PR that I think is very to merge and has had a lot of discussion on it. Um, I was hoping Rod could be here to discuss it uh, as he approved it and Sven approved it. And I know Marcus commented on it. And there's a good summary I noted of the differences between um, various Docker versions and, and accessibility to run C in a, what location. <clears throat> so um, I anticipate that someone will act and uh, merge that sometime soon. So if you wanna view that before it gets merged, uh, please feel free. Um, in terms of scheduled topics, I, I, I promised Gile that he would be top of the agenda. So um, if you are ready, and this is not too abrupt, uh, yes. I'll, turn, I'll turn the uh, screen share over to you. Okay. Uh, play. Okay. Can you see my screen? I, not yet. No. Oh. Well, because last time I started to talk without anyone seeing my screen, so I, I, I. Okay, I have to uh, share share the screen. Yes, there is it is. Play and then then I play. Yes, oh, that's your uh, speaker you, notes. You see oh, no, the version or the the main screen? It's the like presenter view. We you see, we see okay. slide, we see current slide and next slide. Okay, uh, can I start? Sure. Okay, so uh, now I'm talking about the the the, <laughs> the state of action loop. That is a fancy name the, of the um, proxy. The, the what is called the Go proxy. That is the proxy that powers the Go uh, runtime and now many other languages. So the, that now is a pretty developed um, thing, and as we can see. So just a quick recap, everything started when I tried to, to answer to the ticket asking for help for implementing uh, support for the Go languages, because that started by a personal need, because I wanted to use uh, Go in OpenWhisk, I was a bit disappointed of the performances of the support that there was at the time using the Docker container. So I went go implementing Go support. And for doing that, I did a lot of stuff. 
So uh, the first thing is that I invented a way to use Go uh, to call service actions, and the, that was different by all the other runtimes because Go is a compiled languages, and all the other languages uh, except Swift were dynamic languages, Python, JavaScript, that are much easier to implement in a serverless way because all you need to do to do is to dynamically load the code. In Go, you cannot do that because being a compiled language, you have to execute, you have to, you have a monolithic executable. And for this reason, uh, after a discussion on the main list, we defined the so-called actual loop protocol. So you can develop a runtime, basically creating an executable that acts, acts like a, a, a Unix pipe. So it will read the standard input and will output the standard output. So this is the idea behind action loop. And uh, the proxy, the Go proxy, implements this protocol and uh, also uh, implements the, 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 um, the init run contract defined by OpenWhisk. And also a part of, of the, the implementation requires that you can compile source actions. Because at, at the beginning, we, we just wanted an executable, but then it was convenient also to support compilation in, uh, so you can deploy source action in Go and get everything working from a source and the compilation is happen inside the container. And uh, because actually the compilation is pretty slow, one part of the work done is implementing precompilation. Precompilation is the ability to take a source code and using the with Docker, the runtime itself as a compiler that will take your source code and produce a zip that you can use an, as an action that will be very fast to start because it contains only the executable and you, it, it does not to recompile it again. This also was extended to work also with uh, independent languages that may have, for example, virtual environment. So you have the stuff that you need to have the zip. Uh, and also now works also with Java. So surprisingly, <laughs> this, uh, this, this design worked. And I started to, to, to tell the mailing list how fast it was. Other people wanted to try it. So initially it was Swift and Carlos who, who saw a very useful the approach that I used for Go because the, the, the same problems of the, the for Go they are also for Swift because it's a compiled one. Also, uh, PHP was implemented by Rob Allen that uh, wanted a faster runtime and actually it got a, a faster runtime. Actually, actual loop is pretty fast. It is a proxy implementation replacing the, um, the, the Python proxy. Being written in Go is pretty fast, but also I spend a lot of time optimizing the I.O. and having it as fast as possible. So, so you can see in this diagram that the, the same language is that uh, you can see the green, the green uh, line is the time that uh, was uh, that takes it to run uh, 1000 uh, run of the actions using Python, Java, and Ruby. And the same things now in actual loop takes, uh, I think, uh, more than 100, uh, they are 100 times faster. So, uh, so uh, because of this, uh, this thing, <laughs> other languages join the party. And we have now Go, Swift, PHP, Ruby, Python, Rust, and Java implemented with Action Loop. So the, the script pretty. Also, uh, was requested uh, to document the, 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 the thing. Also, I forgot Crystal. <laughs> there is also Crystal in the list. <laughs> I forgot that. Um, so. Uh, because that was requested to document everything, I created a sort of SDK that now part of the dev tools, and there is a, a, a basically a base, 
a base uh, runtime you can just download and you can start writing uh, your runtime and uh, a tutorial that will guide you step by step of what you need to do to implement a new runtime. A new runtime actually can be done in, in, in an hour. If you know the, your, your target language, you only need, uh, here is what you need, in this slide, there is what all you need to implement a new runtime. You have to implement in your languages the actual loop protocol, and what you see is the actual code taken from the, from the, 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 the Ruby runtime. So all you need is to write code like this, that will read input line by line, pass it as a JSON, set a few environment variables, and then call your action, and, and then uh, write it down. This is all, all is needed to implement, uh, so you don't have to implement all the logic of the web server and, uh, and use a number of cases. All you need is to write this one, then you have to write a docker file that will basically set up your your um, will set up your uh, execution environment and also you have to edit and adapt to your language because each language has a different way of uh, compiling the compile script that is provided in the runtime is a python script i choose to use python because it is the simplest language uh, I tried at some point to write it in Ruby, in uh, sorry, in uh, in Go, but it was not a, a good idea because uh, other people wanted. Uh, this is a piece of code that people have to, to change. So having in Python is the best way. But normally you have to just to replace a few a few things like the name of the, the launcher or the file you want to copy. Uh, normally you just need the two key changes that you are done this way. E you can really write a uh, runtime in one, in one hour. Most of the time, the problem has been to, to actually pass the existing tests. But uh, um, new languages can be learned very quickly if you know how to write the launcher. That is uh, probably 90% of the work. So write a program like the one to the, to the left on the, on the slide. So where we are, well, we are finished now. <laughs> there is a lot of work to do because now, for example, uh, there is, we, are, we are working on um, using actual loop uh, for Knative because this way we can support Go, PHP, Python, Ruby, Rust, and Java in a single shot. And also we have the SDK, so that will make it easier to create more, uh, more runtimes. Uh, there is an idea that has been discussed uh, to, to actually the, the, the pre-compilation, to put the pre-compilation part of the deployment. So you can, people can, uh, we can get the speed up of, uh, of having the action compiled just when you deploy, uh, the user has not to compile by itself. And this is something uh, that has been discussed that I would like to work when possible. And also, I have, a, I have a prototype supporting WebSocket that works, but probably it will be better done when we have some native stuff done because it, uh, we, the current uh, OpenWiz is not possible or not easy to export new ports on it because it's, it's not is, uh, the current design. Okay, that's it. Any questions from the camera? Yeah, thanks for all your work. Uh, this is this is great. Again, um, I guess that's a a good segue that um, there is now a new doc in main OpenWhisk on adding action on the front times, which is merged with access secure. Um, I took a pass at updating it, editing it, and I think um, <laughs> I was really impressed. At, and I tried it out myself, and I was impressed with the, the tutorial. Um, any, any questions, I'll just ask more time. If not, um, then moving on, I wanted to mention that uh, we updated, yeah, somebody had a question, sorry? Yeah, we're in q &A for Michael. Uh, I, I saw the performance pretty good. Any reason why it is performing so well compared to the other runtimes? Like, let's because say Java. It's, uh, or... Because it's Go. The, the, the most of the work happens at the Go level. So there is a, um, a web server running Go that is pretty fast. 
And then uh, once it, uh, it, got, it will get the data from the, it will pass just on standard input that is pretty fast on, on, uh, on Linux. And then the rest is done the, in the languages. Of course, the performance are for the symbol hello actions. So it basically measure only the, the input and output of, um, uh, of, uh, of data. So uh, post uh, sending data on the run and sending back the result. Of course, the languages have different speed. So uh, a, a slow action, uh, a complex action in Python will be slower than a complex action right written in, uh, in, uh, in, um, in Go because they, they, those languages have different speed. But basically this is, a, this is way faster because uh, the implementation of a web server in Python or in Java turned out to be much slower than an implementation in Go. That, that is basically the reason. Ah, thanks. Okay, so it's, it's like the, the web server implemented in Go has much less overhead compared to any of the other languages. Yes, I would say yeah. this. So. I was surprised by someone to discover that uh, also the Java is pretty slow. Not surprised that the Python wise uh, or the Ruby one is horribly slow because that yeah. is unknown thing. Everyone knows that uh, using Flask or uh, the, the, the Ruby servers uh, or are, are slow. I was surprised to see that this is slow also the Java one. Yeah, that's but, what uh, you, uh, Like in Java, it's like even you did a performance after like uh, the initial warm up, or it, it's like just you hit cold start and, and there the performance is better. The Java one runtime currently is implemented using the HTTP embedded in the JDK. So is using the, the, that is slow. I think if, if I use something like JT, it would be faster, but also it would complicate the yeah. implementation. But in the end, the actual loop is already tested, completed, and, and it's easy to, to the input and output, so I don't know. You, if you want, you can do it in Java directly using JT, no, no, but no, no, I don't so yeah. the but curiosity was mostly about why it is there. I think it's, it's due to the very fine part of Go web server and network stack is fast. But the important thing is that we have a sort of baseline, so there is already well tested, it's used by many languages, and so it's a sort of uh, fast way to implement a new runtime only having to worry about input output of uh, strings instead of uh, HTTP server and other things that uh, are important like uh, synchronizing, writing in the right way, all things that I solved in the, in the Go runtime, it took almost one year to optimize uh, everything. So, okay. okay. That, that helps. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, okay. Good question, thanks. Um, I will mention that in earnest, you know, Nicolay, Craig, and I have been talking about the next steps of Knative and trying to sync up, make sure that we create a solid contract and also include perhaps a, a Knative SDK for how people can use that to port other, other languages as well. Um, I know that Adobe and Gregos are interested in WebSocket support, so that's really cool. Um, pre, um, uh, page faulting in compilation at the server. I think that's that support that um, we, we now have in the Node.js Knative runtime. And so it's good to see it looking to be extended in the uh, action based runtimes as well. So that's very cool. All right, sharing my screen again. So again, I hear, I have, I'll have a link for the, uh, the new documentation. I guess I can share that here so people can see it's real and live. So you can go here and follow all the all the stuff on how to adding a new action at runtime. Um, website updates. So I guess I noticed a few things. I was I was going through the action loop. I was looking at at to see um, to see what images it produced in Docker, and it started going back. And I noticed that we would never added the the version 13 runtimes. And then I found some other things in relation to that that I've been working with Vincent and Radicon offline. Uh, I think primarily the big thing I'm concerned with is that first of all, until yesterday, we didn't have the, um, the sources pushed to the distribution, Apache distribution site. And um, there's, some, there's a flattening discussion that happened that Dave Rose might raise my attention to. 
as I open another issue. And I just want to make sure that you know our instructions and for for two future release managers is is clear and correct um, because we still do not have uh, tagged images for those releases yet. So I'll be looking to work with Vincent um, today and later this week to make sure we go back to find the commit that was the one we voted on and creating a, a tag release based upon that for these images because that didn't happen. So just be aware as release managers that you know. It's some, if you run into any problems following instructions, if Vincent's around, ping him as he's the author. Uh, open up, if you find the documentation's not correct, open up issues to fix the docs. And I'd rather open a couple. Um, and we need to figure this out to make sure it goes smoothly. And, and as we go through update cycles, we're updating new stuff, we need clear instructions on um, how to update the website and do other things as well. So we're gonna try and work on those things. Um, let's see, next on the agenda is, Devless thread, I wanted to note that there was a topic on OpenShift. Um, so I don't know where the person's from, but his name is Henry Zexter. And I'm thanks Sven and Dave for engaging him. Um, but it looks like he wants to try to attempt to get uh, OpenOS running on the latest OpenShift v4. And he was at inquiring about the Cryo support, the container runtime interface support that's now required. And he looked like he just posted some his debug information and where he thinks things are failing. So I appreciate people helping him. Um, but we'll, you know, we need to, I, I'm concerned about long time support for OpenShift, um, and dedicated support for it over time. Um, so I, I think that there needs to be a discussion and perhaps we need to start with Dave about trying to formalize getting a release of OpenOS Cube and, and making a decision as a community on you know, where we throw our our limited platform support towards and, and things like that. Um, Dave, did you want to comment on this thread at all? Um, in your thoughts? I mean, I don't think there's too much to comment on other than, so he's trying to use the de deploy cube, which I think is the right strategic de decision for us. We ought to go ahead and remove the OpenShift deployment project because uh, that hasn't been maintained. And, and ben, ben told us months ago that basically Red Hat's not going to maintain that piece of it, so we ought to just get rid of it. Okay, um, that's what I wanted to hear. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the you know he did manage to get it deployed to deploy. There's a small fix that hopefully he'll push upstream to us. Um, you know, we have a general just just like all the other plat Kubernetes platforms we support that I don't have easy access to. You know, we re need to rely on the community or someone to actually test them for us, right? Okay. So yeah, I have to figure out, so I guess I'll create a devless thread um, on that topic. I figure I want to you know, do we, do, we, do we think we delete the repo entirely? We do just leave it there for history, historic sake. What's your, what's your opinion? Delete, delete it completely? I don't know. Um, I mean, we can ask what- On the readme, we can, do, we can talk about the devless, but- so. Yeah, I, I, would just, I would just put something in the readme saying, don't use this project anymore, go over here, but not actually, not eagerly deleted because there may still be people who are using it on OpenShift 3 environments. Okay, sounds good, thanks. Um, a lot of blog activity. Thanks, James. Excellent long running Apache OpenOS actions. Results. Hey, Matt, you're, uh, are you sharing your email and not the agenda at the moment? My uh, email? Oh. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's, That's all right. I Carlos was complaining about uh, notes being open. Sorry, that's okay. I was going to show there that. Again. So, so yeah, this is the thread. Here are the, the blog articles. Thanks, James. Um, and so you have your long running actions. We have Pretty's um, article. She's running a series. She's been very prolific. She left on vacation today. Um, so feel free to read the blogs. If you have any comments or suggestions, you can reach out to her. We can we can we can edit or add or uh, these at will. I just got a notice about an hour before this call that um, our colleagues in IBM Research, David Breitkin and Paolo Farchinko, uh, have an article they want to try to publish today um, called Apache OpenWest Meets Raspberry Pi um, that uses the lean OpenWest work that they submitted and was the community merged uh, recently. So that might be interesting. So a lot of things blog about, and I guess that's an invitation to anybody that they become, can become blog authors and help spread the word and do about what they're doing. Um, I know 
Nicolet is a, is a writer. I've confirmed that this morning. So if you want to blog about what you talked about action loop, feel free to write a blog as well. I've been trying to, as people write blogs, um, take those blogs and promote them um, a little bit. I promoted a couple on Twitter. I put, I'm trying to put, I'm promoting all of them on the Facebook page. Um, so um, I'd, I'd welcome any help cross promoting these things as well, um, as I'm not always diligent. So um, please feel free to reach out if you want to help with that. Um, Runtime updates. Again, I talked about the tagging issues we're trying to go through. The website is updated. Uh, I mentioned also that we had, a, we had an offline meeting with Mikele yesterday on uh, taking through the work we did with Node.js and, and just you know, offered our help, support, pretties and myself support in, in taking the action loop based runtimes to do the same thing in the same manner that Node.js did. We discussed some new features that Pretty uh, had submitted that probably people didn't know about. So now we have support from multiple sources. So you can actually build, when we build your Knative based runtime, you can actually uh, not only, um, you can pull the source from GitHub basically, um, and uh, which is cool. We'll probably have to talk about how we do it with credentials um, later when we have time. Um, and then beyond that, she's now working on compiling, um, compiling at the server, compiling in the, in the, in the cluster. So you actually can pull your sources um, for Node.js, you should be able to npm install for you. See, so we're trying to move away from people having to package zip files and jar files and things like that at the client. We're trying to do it at the server for them and experimenting with that. And I think also Miguel mentioned that as, as future steps for action. Loop. So we're, we're on the same track. And if you, if you missed it as well, we're looking at trying to see as how much we can do in the runtimes, which are calling kind of like the container proxy, maybe in a more generic term, in accordance with what we see being proposed by Dregos on the wiki uh, for, for moving us closer towards Kube and Knative. Uh, this container proxy um, is envisioned to be able to have perhaps uh, support direct connections, direct IAM, uh, and things like that. Some very, very increasingly cool things that perhaps are enabled by, by things I talk about um, below on Kubernetes to Native. So please go back to the wiki. It's, it's actively being updated. And people not, might not be paying attention to it, but we, we've introduced things about inclusion of Envoy, for example. We, we, um, we're, we just started talking about, in earnest, talking about uh, the CADA announcement by Microsoft and Red Hat, um, which I think is very exciting uh, and opens up a lot of possibilities. So please do um, participate in that wiki and add comments and feel free to reach out to Dragos. Um, in terms of graduation, good news. Oh, Matt, um, can I yeah. make a comment on the run times? Yes. Okay. Um, so I've finally been able to merge the PR this morning around Node V12. There was just like some Heisenberg in the, uh, the, the Travis job, which when I rerun it, magic is fixed. So we could get merged. Um, so I think I've done all the, the bits now, right? So the, the runtime Node.js project was done like last week, that image is available. I added it to Kube, uh, which Dave merged, and then it's now in the main project. So it's, it's good to go. And I wanted to ask people, like, I guess I should do a release. I think I should do a release, right? Since this is like a more major thing. But how, like, the, for the release, I guess it's going to be three components. It's going to be the core projects, it's going to be the runtime Node.js, and maybe the Kube projects that have all been kind of updated with Node 12. Right. Uh, is that, do people think that sounds right? And then what version would I use? Because they're all, it's right. like three different components. It's not three of the same component, like, so yeah, I was, I was looking for some comments on what would be best. Right, so, so I think what you should do is just release the node runtime and make that 0 0.14. 114. Yeah, 114. Because we haven't, we haven't actually released the kube or the main project yet. So now that we've got the runtimes done, um, we've got to get API gateway and the package catalog. And maybe there's like one or two other ones. Um, and then we'll have all, all, the, all the leaf components done and we can do a release of the main system and then we can do a release of kube deploy on top of that. Okay, so th this is, so yeah, I'll do, I'll do the node runtime just separately then. Um, okay, that's fine. I'll just, I, that makes it much easier. 
Right. Yeah. Just so just do that, and then we we we're gonna have to roll once we get all of the the subcomponents released. Then we can do a, a, a coordinated release of the main project where we nail in all of the image tags for the subcomponents, so that when you deploy that any time in the future, you get everything you you're supposed to get. It'll be a coherent a coherent picture. Okay. Perfect. All right. Wicked. Thanks. Good advice. I'll uh, I'll endeavor to do that before the end of the week, and then and post the dev list. And then Node.js 12, I think Roderick just finished the 1.13, but you can just do the 1.14 for Node.js. And, and we were on the path to release like a whole suite, like David said. The, the one thing that I would say that um, we, have, we have threads. So this is where we discuss things. That there should be a thread on the, on the main components, cube and core. The only thing I would ask is that if, if we want to, and I, I would uh, propose that, we want to make no no twelve the default, um, or remove no js six uh, before you cut. Before think, okay, yeah. So what you did was added added no js twelve as as just another flavor of no js twelve uh, no js. So now we have six, ten, twelve, um, and eight. And eight. Don't forget eight. <laughs> yeah. We have six, eight, ten, and twelve. So do we want to remove six and make 12 the default? Yeah, we should ask. That's a good, I, I definitely think we should remove six because, and we will obviously ask on the main list, um, we should definitely remove six because it's out of LTS. So people just shouldn't be using that. Um, I don't know about making 12 the, the default yet. No. Um, or, make, or remove six and make 10 LTS the default. That's what yeah. they also yeah. 10, 10 is 10, the default. 10 now. is the default now. That one went in last week. Or oh, earlier this yeah, week, so that's, or um, yeah, yeah. The, I I saw that the breaking test um, that used Node.js six. Um, yeah, so that's all fixed. So we fixed all that. So ten is now the default, which is I think that's kind of fine. And then okay, so just remove I, six, leave ten the default. Yeah, I think that's a good. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of six, and I'll uh, if I can get then if we get there, and I agree, then we can then I'll release what with those two changes rather than just doing one. Um, just thinking out loud. If if one dot fourteen, um, we should modify the uh, and these all these things that we can discuss in the mailing list. If the one dot one dot fourteen Node.js twelve release, uh, the packaging script should like um maybe remove or not include Node.js six. Leave it in the repo, but not in the release. That's something to think about. As opposed to just removing it from the runtime. Yeah, oh, remove it from source. Yeah, remove it from source also it's another alternative. Yeah. I can oh yeah, I mean but, but, but don't don't wait for one to fourteen to do that. I think what you have right now is a good cut and then we can we can do like another four um, doing releases should be easy, it should be like voting, yeah. cutting um once we graduate it'll be faster. But, yeah, don't right. don't you know, just make a cut one dot fourteen and do the dance. Uh, All say, right. Uh, do a discuss and do a release and yeah. yeah. So you think just okay? So I'll cut one dot fourteen as it is with Node V twelve, and then uh, I can start work on the V six because there's you know there's a couple of things to like tie up to to change any runtime version because there's different projects. So it's not it'll be another week or two minimum. Yeah, and they've already finished the leaves for the, the CLI and the other ones, I think, right there. Yeah. Right, yeah, the CLI's already. I think there's just, uh, it's API Gateway and the package catalog. Um, and, and probably the part of the package catalog discussion we ought to have on the dev list is there's stuff in there that we need, that we should deprecate or throw out. Mm -hmm. I know there's stuff in there that we're not deploying at IBM anymore. Um, yeah. So I don't know if there's other stuff in there that, whether we keep that or, or deprecate, that, that's a mailing list discussion. Yeah. And I will not hold releases because of these things. These things are happening every week. So cutting a release should be normal, right? This, things should be stable always in master. Yep. So. That's it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, so going, next topic is about good news, <laughs> release graduation. So I was, one of the emails I was verifying before the call, we were staring at for a while unintentionally. Um, that basically I got seven emails. I was CC'd on from the VP brand email at Apache Software Foundation. 
Uh, basically, that's Mark Thomas primarily. Um, and we got his scanned signature pages of, of, of seven documents which cover Canada, France, Mexico, and all the white belt countries. So uh, our IP team is waiting for the originals and, um, and verifying that and verifying all the signatures and everything are correct. But it looks like we're ready to graduate in terms of a legal um, blocker. So good news. Um, so I, I guess that um, means that if we want to engage in the discussion on the mailing list, I'd love to have somebody um, besides myself or somebody from IBM as well, or somebody to, to you know, endorse um, graduation and, and help um, be a leader through the process. So maybe I'll be poking people like Roderick and I know Dave's been very interested in this topic and seeing who can shepherd this through. Um, here now. What is what is remaining and now this all legal stuff is done and like good work I, mom. Basically just it's you know, there's a process, you know, I can point to um, maybe I'll start mailing this thread to to go through to point out where we can look catchy. The maturity list is the one I'm concerned. The maturity so I I endeavored to finish the maturity model. I stopped finishing the last six rows um, because yeah. I couldn't answer them in earnest. It was about me answering on behalf of the community, what how I believe community part, health was and the community participation was. And being from I, IBM, I felt it wasn't proper for me since IBM did the project and dominated the project initially to yes. answer that question. I'd rather have, that's why I want someone else to lead us. I want somebody from Roderick, like Roderick or somebody like Nave or like Dom or something like that to, to fill out the, those last six lines and answer honestly from their opinion if they believe we should graduate and make the nomination. I, I think that we can we can do that as a as as a community. Just open a thread for each question, and then at the end, um, you know, um, anyone can put the 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 short summary with a link to to the pony email thread, and that's it, right? We have a we discuss it, and this is the result. That's it. So right. opening email threads will be a good way versus waiting for one focal point to invest time from their weekend to or whatever nights, right? To do this. And it's just here's here's the answer as a community. Here's the email address where people say A or N A or gave examples on how the health um, is right. Um, yeah, I think I'll probably try to answer answer multiple questions in one email, but that's a great idea, Carlos. Thank yeah, you. yeah, just just a thread and then use the link to the thread, and then that that will prove that we discuss it, and this is what we think why we think is the answer is yes. And the other thing is to close this release that we were just talking about, just do a one like sweet release, and that will give us like. Um, um, like credib credibility that we we know how to do releases, right? And we follow the process. We may not do them like bi-weekly, <laughs> um, but we, we at least we have one or two um, that we can prove that we, we can do this on our own. We don't need the incubator. Right. right, okay. Right, right. and there's a, there's a little bit of feedback from Bertrand on a mail list thread from like six weeks ago we need to address too, which is just trying to document um, more explicitly that you know all important decisions happen in the dev list or in GitHub, you know things with URLs, not on Slack. I think we do that. We just need to write a little paragraph somewhere um, to sort of cover to close that point out. Oh, like in the yeah, I like yeah, you know, like like, like a website, community. yeah, on the, on the website to put something in terms of our policy or the way we work. Um, yeah. how we use Slack and the official thing is the mailing list and. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, Bertrand wasn't so fixated on it being the mailing list, just that it being you know things with URLs that people can engage with asynchronously, and so we just need to sort of talk about how we how we structure that and where you can find these things. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, then we probably have some. I mean, this is part of the graduation process, but we we have to do some amount of um, figuring out who's actually continuing on the PPMC. Yeah, yeah, from, that's that's the least a, a, a few resolve list from trim list. Absolutely, I'm hoping the list shows that we have a good balance of people that you know confirms maturity model status in terms of a healthy community, healthy distribution. All right, that's everything I had on my agenda. Any other topics anybody want to, wants to raise today? If not, I'd love to have a person volunteer to be the next. 
moderator for the 29th. Can anybody be brave and step forward and say that they will be able to moderate? I'll be here to do all the things I tried to do multitask today and probably did, did very badly on, as you saw. <laughs> I'd be happy to uh, volunteer and uh, do it next time. Justin, thank you very much. And with that, that's where I will call us adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.